every time I think Tony is going to covertly lower the quality of his shoes because TLB is already a known name, he proves to me that he cares about letting his shoes do the talking with some new improvement to his craft. Let's be honest for a second. Some brands begin to cut corners the very second they've secured that firm hold with shoe enthusiasts who now trust the brand, and people stop looking as closely as they once did when the brand first hit the market. But not Tony. His dedication to shoemaking continues to inspire trust with aficionados who care about quality over quantity. Since I first reviewed the TLB 110s a few years ago, I've been consistently impressed by the quality of work TLB is putting out, and that hasn't changed at all with this review. It's really not surprising, therefore, that I wear my TLB split toe bleachers every week without fail, meaning they are the pair of shoes I just keep reaching for, and wear more consistently than any other shoe I own. I didn't plan on that happening either. They just fit well and pair with anything from jeans to a suit. I wear them to nights out with my wife, and even wore them to the first wedding I officiated. And I'll tell you something, it's not often a pair of shoes I review on the Elegant Oxford Review Series ends up in my personal rotation, but these did. The 290 is not ostentatious or loud. It doesn't beg for your attention like other shoes in your wardrobe with strong colors or an innovative design because it doesn't need to. It's just gonna patiently wait until you notice it and then become obsessed with winning its affection. The old adage is true. It's hard to beat the classics. The design is as proven as the solid white dress shirt. It's impossible to build an impressive wardrobe without a dark brown cap to Oxford, but you might as well go all the way with your staple pieces because this one's gonna do a lot of work for you. Some shoes demand to be the center of attention. They demand to wear you instead of the other way around, but the 290 seems to succeed best as a faithful wingman, ever ready to elevate you instead of itself and never seeking its own interests over your own. That being said, although the 290 might appear tame to some, beneath its modest exterior lies a reservoir of intensity and complexity which sets it apart from the average Oxford. If you want to see if a shoe is hiding any dirty secrets, looking at easily concealable areas where nobody ever looks is a good place to start. The sole, in fact, is just one such area where less effort is often utilized because who's going to see it anyway? But even here. The 290 maintains its integrity with a 2 inch beveled waist that purposefully yet surreptitiously shows you just enough to raise an inquisitive eyebrow, while closed channel stitching and J. Rendon box soles paint the complete picture. I opted for a double oak sole instead of a single because I like the robust proportions of the look better, but it's completely up to you. The 290 is here to serve. The 290 is almost making a pretense of modesty, with the actual aim at alluring you to put them on your feet as fast as possible. It likes to play coy because this Oxford knows that it has it where it counts. The 290 doesn't need anything else to justify itself, but it continues to deliver almost as if it's within its very nature to do so. Full leather heel stacks and pronounced and deep welt fudging aren't there because the 290 is asking for its approval. These fine details simply exist almost as if by genetic predisposition, kind of like your buddy who has a six pack yet has never worked out a day in his life. They're just built different. I still haven't changed my mind about the Artista line. This is one of the best deals you can get for around $400 to $500 depending on the customization, but there's no doubt about it. TLB continues to innovate and improve as time has gone on, so let's look at one of those improvements now. As I've learned more about shoemaking, one such fine detail that I've come to really appreciate is a leather heel crafted without using a seam. The seamless heel is only really seen as you approach the higher end of the quality spectrum because it's an element of flamboyancy nobody but the well-informed or the astute will notice. It's so concealed and secluded behind the ornate presentation of the front of the shoe that only those really intent on purposely creating an impressive display will take the time to do it. What's more, it's not easy to pull off. It's an ambitious detail that many simply avoid in favor of an easier and large seam that dissects the heel in two. The leather upper is beautifully proportioned with a last that still offers a conservative elegance which allows a shoe into any boardroom while simultaneously showing off the appeal of its exquisite dimensions without going overboard. The toe cap is modest and unassuming but avoids any stubbiness or diminished length with a front end that's slightly elongated for elegance but not overly long like you might see on other shoes.
Now, if I had any real complaints about this shoe, it would be that they're difficult to shine. Let me explain what I mean. It's not because they're made using subpar leather, because they aren't. And it isn't because these Oxfords won't shine, because they will, as you can see. It's just that these shoes aren't going to let you have it so easily. They're going to make you work for it. It just so happens that when you deal with as many shoes as I do, you quickly realize that some shoes just shine expeditiously, while others take their sweet time. From my experience, TLB are the latter. The curves and the overall silhouette of the shoe evoke a sense of undefiled yet unassuming elegance. The 290 is utterly confident in its ability to impress without having to resort to boisterous showboating. I especially like the straight contours that lead the eye along the side of the shoe and forward toward the toe, culminating in a slightly aggressive stance reminiscent of a sports car ready to jump off the line. It's a detail that isn't shouting for attention, and it isn't at the forefront of the shoe's design like most elements of the 290. The shoe has to be appreciated for its subtlety. After all that's said and done, the 290 cap to Oxford is a rousing success. As far as Goodyear welted shoes go, TLB Mallorca represents one of the highest echelons of its class, meaning it's at the apex of the quality versus price ratio. It does have competitors, don't get me wrong, but the 290 is a fierce opponent. After this point, you start to see some diminishing returns in what you're going to be getting for the amount of money you spend, which isn't a bad thing at all because sometimes you should go all out. But that being said, your money is going to get you the most amount of shoe possible with TLB. All things considered, I'm glad to see that consistency and even improvement over the years that I've been reviewing this company. Here's to many more.